gang, it's good to be with you again, and this is just a little vision update. Uh, you know, really kind of wonderful. Uh, this morning I woke up to an email from Allison Chant, and um, Ken is and Allison have been working on um, a series of, of stories on Ken's life and ministry, and so it's it's kind of waiting for me tonight to to begin to read. I'm very excited about seeing what he has to say about himself and life and his insights and uh, and that he's continuing to go on. Keep them in prayer. Also, please keep in prayer uh, our one of our board of regents, Jerry Hom. Dr. Hom has uh, he does have bladder uh, type of bladder cancer. They think they've got a, a treatment strategy. It's been a very tough go, so please keep him in prayer. We're trusting God for an absolute miracle healing for Dr. Again Jerry Hom. Hey, also uh, this morning, as is t- traditional for me, I had an on, uh, online a Zoom meeting with uh, George Runyon and fellow brothers, list leaders within the San Diego County area. And uh, this morning, what we began to talk about a little bit was spiritual formation. And I just listened to them chat about that for a little bit and just kind of sense maybe I should chime in a little bit. Spiritual formation, of course, has to do with the, the transformation of our life, our character that begins when we're born again. You know, it's not, not an event, it's, it's a process. So I shared a little, you know, a few thoughts, and I jotted down my thoughts as I went, and I just thought, why not think out loud on this? And so, you know, uh, also uh, last week I saw a, a master's thesis by a student from Southeastern University, Jordan Reed, and he wrote one on discipleship in the Pentecostal community. And anyway, all that just kind of triggered some some thoughts and. Uh, you know, it starts, my first thoughts start with kind of wrong concepts that many people have. You know, when I was first born again at a, you know, a young age of 12 and, you know, from a life of sin and degradation. Anyway, you know, what I was told, it was the first primary evangelical Christian lie, which was, you know, you give your heart to Jesus, everything going to be all right. And of course, not everything's all right. I mean, I came home to the same dysfunctional family, had the same issues I had to deal with. The difference was, of course, yes, I was forgiven, and I had been cleansed of my sin, although I didn't understand that. Um, a little while later, I was baptized, and that was meaningful. And, but, you know, it's, when I was born again, it started a journey. Now, I, you know, was, I've shared in my book, uh, Journey to Wholeness, you know, there's a process. You start as children, then young men, fathers, and that's based upon 1 John 2, 12 through 14. But, you know, I was thinking this morning, sharing with the, with the guys on the, on the Zoom call, that, um, you know, I mean, the next process, I was raised in a holiness-type church, so being sanctified, and sanctified was also taught at the time as an experience, not the same as baptism of the Holy Spirit, Speaking in tongues and gifts of the Spirit. Now, this was different. This was a holy fire that cleansed you. Well, I, you know, went through that quote-unquote experience and became even more aware of my inner thoughts and my struggles with with various areas of temptation, etc. In other words, lie number two, it didn't fix the character. You know, I mean, it was good and it moved me probably in a better direction than not having experienced the presence of God, but it, it wasn't all that it was cracked up to be. And then, you know, at 17, I experienced the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I was told the same thing, you know, that what you need, this is it. This is the answer to all of your problems. Get filled with the Holy Ghost. And especially if you speak in tongues, and everything will be fine. Now, can all of us understand that that's obviously not, not true. That, in fact, uh, that our spiritual formation, our growth in character of the fruit of the Spirit manifesting in our lives is a process, not an event. And unfortunately for many, because they're gifted, talented, anointed, they get promoted and put into positions of leadership before they've been properly tested, before their character has been fully formed. And it's a real problem in the body of Christ today. 
You know, one of the metaphors that was used by this uh, Jordan uh, Reed, uh, again, a student at Southeastern University, an honor student there, uh, he used the metaphor from scripture of the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I mean, my, you know, it starts with, similar to what I talk about in my book, Journey to Wholeness. Uh, again, it starts as children. We start as being thoroughly and completely dependent upon God for our every need. We must learn a few things as children that we're loved, that we're wanted, that we're cleansed, that we're, the, uh, we're in the family, that nothing will separate us from the love of God. There's therefore now no condemnation to those in Christ Jesus and, and so many other scriptures. You know, that when, we, when Jesus died in that sense, we died with him and he was buried, we're buried, raised, raised, ascended, ascended, and we're seated with him in the heavenlies in Christ. These are things that we... It's doctrines that we hopefully need to learn to embrace, but it's not enough just to embrace the doctrine in terms of our belief, but it has to become a part of how we live. That from that place we live a lifestyle that we would say is separated unto God, separated for his purpose, or what we would call holy. That is what God has called us to, a life of holiness, separated unto him, living life you know, where the fruit of the Spirit is the predominant, not always perfect, but the predominant manifestation of our daily life. And so I was just doing a, a lot of thinking about that. And you know, the, the fact is where that's supposed to happen, if you will. I mean, it doesn't happen in isolation. I mean, I, I work with a lot of guys that are struggling with drug and alcohol and you know, one of the problems that they have that leads to a relapse after they've been clean for a long period of time is when they isolate themselves, when they step away from the connected relationships that keep them accountable. You know, what is that connected relationship for us? Well, it's the local church. We need the church. Everybody needs to be a part of a local fellowship, whether that's a home church or whatever it is. I mean, it should have leadership, it should have worship and ministry of the word, and the, but there must be accountability. There must be enough relationship where we love each other enough to confront each other when we're not living at the standard that God intends. Not in a legalistic way, but because of all that Christ has already done for us. He wants us to live our lives as pure and holy and righteous before him and, and in love with one another. So anyway, I just was doing some thinking about that. I mean, the importance of spiritual formation, especially, again, in light of so many failures that we've seen amongst leadership, you just have to stop and wonder, you know, what was it about them that led them in the direction of giving up, as it were, their integrity to chase after things that would only lead them to destruction and and one of the assumptions is, is that they probably didn't have an adequate foundation or formation of Christ in them, the hope of glory of Christ in them, that which has thoroughly transformed them into the very image of Christ and living that out by God's grace. But again, the key is if you isolate, King David isolated when he was supposed to head out to war, he stayed behind. When you isolate, you set yourself up for, for failure. It opens the door to temptation, etc. So anyway, just some thoughts on that. Listen, I hope you all have a wonderful week in the Lord and uh, keep trusting God, keep working together, keep training and equipping God's people because, I mean, it's worth every effort to see Christ fully formed in those students that you serve. God bless.